Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everybody here to our council meeting on March 26, and the time <laughs> is 1 p.m., and I'll call this meeting to order. I'll first read off the land acknowledgement. We respectfully acknowledge that the Township of Asphodel Norwood is located on the Treaty 20 Mississauga Territory and the traditional territory of the Mississauga and Chippewa Nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty's First Nations, which include Curve Lake, Hiawatha, Alterville, Scugog Island, Rama, Beausoleil, and Georgina Island's First Nations. The Township of Asphodel Norwood respectfully acknowledges that the Williams Treaty First Nations are the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. I will now invite everyone to pause for a moment of silent reflection to prepare for the council meeting ahead as a gesture of respect and contemplation. Declaration of pecuniary interest. I'll now ask members to declare any direct or indirect pecuniary interest before this council. Seeing no hands, we'll move on to approve the agenda. I'm looking for a motion to approve today's agenda as circulated or as amended. Moved by Councillor War. Second by Deputy Mayor Burt. Circulated or as amended? Um, as amended um, to adopt the uh, consent agenda by going C4. All right. Approval of the minutes for, is everybody in favor of that motion? Okay. Um, approval of the minutes for March 12th, 2024. I'm looking for a motion to adopt the regular uh, meeting minutes of March 12th as presented or amended. As presented. As presented, Councillor Walsh, second by Councillor Hodge Greaves. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? That motion's carried. Um, on to the consent agenda. Oh, oh you're okay. Ask if the council has any business arising from the uh, minutes of March 12th. Sorry, councillors, never seen no hands up. All right, moving along, correspondence. Onto the correspondence agenda. We have correspondence items C through C4, C6 through C8, and the business advisory committee minutes of October 30th. Do we have someone to approve these as amended by pulling C5? Moved by Deputy Mayor Burke. Yes, with a comment. And comment. Councillor War, comment. All right, comments. Um, I just wanted to pull C two and two of the um, two of the items in there. In C two. All right. Um, I would like to pull C two with one item and uh, C six, which was Deputy Mayor um, uh, Burke's. Uh, there's a uh, Haverhill County tiered response. Um, All right. Would you like to speak on it now? Sure. Uh, so the first one was, um, it was just under the provincial matters and it's on page 19 of the agenda. The province is conducting a survey to inform the creation of rural economic development strategy and share your ideas on how they can support rural communities plan for economic success. So um, I just went in there, there's basically three questions. So I just encourage everyone to, to go in. I think it's important that we have our voice. Um, rural economic development is very important to us. So, so um, page 19. it's on page 19 of the agenda. Yeah, it's right at the top of the page. It's under the provincial okay. matters. Um, <clears throat> and it's just three questions. So it's not necessarily a survey. They're just looking for input. So that was my first one. Can I do this? Yes. One now, um, and the next one was under the municipal wire, and that's on page 20 of the agenda. Uh, the invasive species center um, has an action fund intake to assist municipalities in combating um, those variety of species. So it might be a short turnover given 
um, everything that's happening in the township right now, but it sounds like it's an annual an annual thing. So I think it's something that uh, we need to look at. We have, you know, the poison ivy and giant hogweed and dog strangling vine, and we have a lot of stuff going on. Yes. So um, I think uh, I, I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. So that's it for me. Thank you. Okay. And Councillor Wolf. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I did have a question to our CAO with our work. Um, I was just wondering if um, any uh, staff members were going to attend the age friendly forum that's coming up, or if there was any interest. Very good. Um, we have advised one of our staff members who that would fit within, and she is looking into it. I have not heard back yet whether she's going to be able to attend or not, but we are asked to. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor Walsh? Yeah, really, it's just to echo um, Deputy Mayor Burks regarding the Invasive Species Action Fund. I did notice that there was some funding there that, again, we could be tight for this year, but it could be something for another year. All right. At least if we look at it now, we'll have the paperwork for next year partially done. Um, all in favor of, oops, sorry, Councillor Walsh. Um, yes, um, thank you. I just wanted to um, pull something from C6, which was Deputy Mayor's uh, report, and, and it was on page 59 uh, under the staff report from the county. Uh, and I have reached out to our fire chief um, for some um, answers uh, to my question. And I, I was just wondering, I see that um, OSM and Selwyn have um, entered into uh, a fire-based tiered response agreement. If I could through you to our fire chief, I was just wondering if he had any insight that he could share on the differences of why they might, uh, you know, enter into this agreement where it may not work for Aspinall Narrow Township. Just to give some people some okay. an idea. Okay, through you, Mayor. Each municipality has unique differences in needs. And uh, with Tony, we saw the modeling, we're finding out that uh, because when they had a, a response to a medical call, they were arriving at the same time as an ambulance. Right now in Peterborough County, our response time is for response is when it is 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So because we have an ambulance base here in Norwood, we don't get many of those 10 minute calls because they're there, unless they're not in the area. Mm -hmm. Tony South Monitor does not have a ambulance base. So the ambulance is coming from Norwood or Peterborough, which and every one of their medical calls would then meet that criteria. So they're being tiered at the same time as the ambulance and both showing up at the same time. So Tommy South Monaghan, Monaghan is hoping that this 50 minute window will stop the dual du duplication of services. Okay. Okay. Tommy, um, Selwyn, 1600 calls plus a year. And uh, they have a lot of difficulty breathing calls. They're looking at they're almost treating that as a nuisance call. I have some issues with that because we've had a few difficulty breathing. So almost every medical call is a difficulty breathing call mm -hmm. somebody is sick, right? Or needs need help mm -hmm. in some way. But we've also had these calls transition into PSAs, vital signs absence. Right. So either they're trying just to uh, mitigate costs. But if so, my point of view is inside in Ascom North, one of our residents call for help, should be helping them. Councillor or Deputy Member. Uh, yeah, and just on that, I know um, the mayor from OSM was saying what was happening with the amount of medical calls. Um, a lot of times they get there, they'd arrive at the same time yes. as the ambulance, and then the fire personnel. It was almost like a you know cry wolf. They go and go and go and go, and then the next time they get a call, oh well, I don't need to go, and maybe they should have. So I think it just puts a clear parameters for them and gives them that fifteen minutes. Um, so so yeah, that that was the one thing that he was he was saying at the meeting. But I think I wanted to put this in there just to show that it is an option, and um, you know certainly the paramedic service and the fire services can talk to each other, and if there needs to be agreements in place. At some point, it may, you know, it may get there, and you know, Hospital Moore is growing, and maybe at some point, though, there will need to be an agreement put in place. So, I just wanted to include that in the report because I thought it was interesting. I hadn't seen it before. I got one more point out. We found out with Hastings. Hastings does our southern calls for incidents. At one time, Norwood and Hastings were being tiered at the same time. By the time we got there, Hastings already had an ambulance, so right. we don't go there anymore unless unless necessary. We're called for so I was a verbal agreement, but uh, trying to also work. 
Um, Councillor Four. Yes, Dave, I, I may have a follow up for you there. Go ahead. Um, do you think that um, like there's going to be any dispatch service coming in the future? Do you think that this will help coordinate things even even more? I think so. Like we yeah. can, like council can re-examine this uh, anytime. Yeah. Right. If you think there's a need to change our agreements, so that's that's, that's, that's like very doable. No, I think everyone's doing a great job. I just saw this <laughs> forward, and I think that your answer was spot on. I think that the community needs to know why we do the things we do, and I think the answer was spot on. I thank you for that. Just further to that, years ago when I was on the fire department, you used to assess the patient. You did the blood pressure. Okay. You did all this stuff. Ambulance would come. You could hand that paper to them and away they would go. Doesn't work that way anymore. You could hand that piece of paper to them, it's going right in the garbage because they all of a sudden do all their assessment work right there again. So it is it is a duplication, but that happens. Just a comment. All in favor of the motion on the consent agenda. Motion is carried. Delegations, we had no delegations with us today. So we'll move ahead with staff reports. R1, Kyle Peacock, our water wastewater operations manager, please. All right, good afternoon. Through you, Mayor. Um, Get back to the topic. <laughs> that was a big one. Uh, <clears throat> so, looking at the uh, council of the township of Asheville, Norwood accepts this report regarding the Norwood Wastewater Treatment Plant 2023 annual report for information. Uh, so, this is part of our ECA to uh, supply this report every year to the ministry and to the uh, council. Um, so, the purpose of this report is basically to provide performance record for future references to ensure that the ministry is made aware of any problems as they arise to provide a compliance record of all terms and conditions outlined in the ECA, the environmental compliance uh, approval. I won't go through that whole report. No, no, not at all, Kyle. Unless you guys need a nap. Um, so the, the, uh, uh, we had a, a pretty good operational year last year, um, except for October, we exceeded our phosphorus limit for that month, um, and uh, which reported to the ministry. And uh, that's the, the summary. Just to follow up, Kyle, to that, what you just said, because I did have that written down, and it did happen in May of 2022, too, the phosphorus. 2021, yeah. Or, okay, I thought it was 2022. Yeah. Any reason for that happening? No, I mean, we sometimes it's linked to phosphorus, or I mean to alum dosing. Right. Uh, so we were flushing alum pumps. We actually rebuilt a couple pumps at that time. Um we flush the headers to make sure that they're clear of debris. Flush the filters. The thing with the wastewater plant is it doesn't respond like that. Right. <laughs> so, right. Um, and th it's a batch plant as well, so it's hard to know exactly what side the problem's coming from. You're trying to chase samples to see if you can pinpoint it. So sometimes it takes uh, a couple weeks to get it kind of settled out. A couple high residuals and kind of put you over pretty monthly hours. So. Well, thank you. I just wondered why yeah, to just, yeah. you just explained that. Any other questions for Kyle? Uh, Count, or Deputy Mayor Bird? Uh Thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I just, I, I sent this question to um, to Kyle, so thank you very much for answering. And I, I just thought I'd put it out there in case others were wondering. Um, we're moving from the mesh software system to citywide, yes. so I just wondered... Um, you know, it, would there be operational challenges during that transition and uh, the pros to moving from mesh to citywide? So I, I think I think that's a good question for everyone to, yeah. to hear because I wasn't sure about that. Yeah. So through you, Mayor, um, I actually think it should be fairly seamless, the transition. Um, there will be a, like a short period of time where we're running them. They're both overlapping. There's going to be some challenges there because we're going to be duplicating the input of data. Um, but it's going to be quite seamless. It's actually going to feed the information that we do in the field now is actually going to feed back to the actual asset within the TCA, which is nice. Right now, the two programs don't talk to each other. Uh, so I think it's actually, uh, it should it should be pretty smooth. Um, it's going to take some work to get there, and there's a lot of information to get over citywide uh, to get all the work orders set up. But once it's up and running, I think it should be pretty good. And 
there should be it should be pretty seamless. Good, thank you. Yeah. Uh, one other question, uh, Kyle. Um, doing a super job. <laughs> I can say that. I know you're busy as heck. But I was reading the report there, and it says that they give you an extra forty-five days to hand that report in. Do you use that forty-five days? Yeah, I try to. My kind of goal is usually like end of February, first week of March. Right. right. Um, we have up until the end of uh, March to. Okay. So the next quarter, basically, of the operational year, we have to have that one in. So. I just wondered if you use them days all the time. Or... Sometimes I need to use every day I get. Right. <laughs> yes, no doubt. But uh, yeah, we always kind of try to shoot for the end of February to get that done. And uh, we kind of got prodded along this year because we actually had an inspection uh, at the end of February. Okay. So he wanted to see this. So uh, kind of. Maybe put my cards on the table, but it's already <laughs> to be done anyways. No, thank you very much. And uh, Councillor War. Thank you, Community Mayor. I just have one question. Uh, I see that there's still two farms within the township that use the biosolids, and that there was one that was in the township of Loyalist. And was that a facility, like kind of uh, to get rid of the, um, the biosolids? Um, yeah, the so sites? sometimes, it, usually it's around this time of year too, where yeah. they can't get on the fields, and we're full. Well, so we've actually had to remove three loads this year to their storage facility. Is yeah. that the closest one that's yeah. available? Yeah, I'm yeah. just curious. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 Um, there's that one. There's also one out by Kingston, which we try not to get this all there because it's pricey. But yeah. So okay. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other? Actually, just a, through you, Mayor. You've already kind of answered the question. Just to run the phosphorus piece. So thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. for I know we had the one month. You know, I guess my concern was is that a trend we should worry about? But it sounds like it really was a one-off. Yeah, it typically is. It's usually only a couple of samples that drive it up. So it's usually a couple of weeks that of, of over samples of burning it. Um, not really a trend. I don't think we have to worry about it. Phosphorus has been great uh, since then. So yeah. awesome. all Thank within you. objectives. Thank you very much, Kyle. Um, that being said I'll, uh, said, I'll state the recommended motion that the Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood accepts this annual report regarding the Norwood Wastewater Treatment Plant for 2023 as information. Moved by Deputy Mayor Burt, second by Councillor Walsh. All in favor? Motion's carried. I'll let you continue, Kyle, with your professional engineering services. All righty. Uh, put on my public works out here, too. But, um... <laughs> So uh, I'll read the recommendation here that the Council of the Township of Ashfordville Norwood receives this report regarding the results from RFP 2024-02, which is professional en engineering services required for Legion Street Design and Tender, Maple Avenue Design and Tender, Wellington Street Design and Tender, Mill Street Design and Tender package. Um, I also see that we're missing a couple up there, uh, which is the Ashville Third Line and the, uh, oh no, we did this Mill Street. Which is the bridge. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, both the 2024 Public Works and the Water Wastewater Capital budgets included a number of projects that required engineering for design and tendering packages. Uh, these projects either required upgrades to aging infrastructure or required upgrade to infrastructure in order to support proposed developments, which is Legion Street over to Mill. Um, that's the sanitary there. So uh, when we looked at this, there was, there was a number of projects, and we thought instead of trying to go out and RFP each one and dealing with all these submissions and numerous engineers, which is hard enough to deal with one sometimes, um, that we kind of lump them all into one package uh, just to streamline the process, mm -hmm. maybe sharpen their pencils, get a little better number, get some efficiency that way. So that's the way we did it. Um, so as a result, staff prepared an RFP for engineering services that include the following. So Legion Street. So... Legion Street, what kicked that off was the there's a new sanitary main that's got to go through there. It's going to connect from the manhole on Cedar, like kind of at the car wash where um, the work from the other upgrades ended. Right. Well, not ended, but that's the yeah. manhole we're going to connect into. So we got to go under the river there across Legion and then through township owned property on the other side, that open space in there. Yes. Over Mill Street. From there on out, it's going to be the developers that are going to be responsible for taking it. Right to us from there, um, but we kind of took this piece in house. Just you know, Legion needs some work, anyways. Some storm water work needs to be done there. It's kind of a mix of ditch and culvert. It's a oh. dog's breakfast. Uh, it's an old four-inch AC water main there as well. If you're gonna slam a waste or a sanitary pipe beside it, you're probably gonna smash it all smash. Right. Needs anyways. Yeah. So we thought we'd lump it all in and just get the work all done as and kind of semi-urbanize the street sidewalk. Right. 
that kind of deal. So um, the all the sanitary portion of that engineering is going to be put to the developer. Right. Um, a small percentage of the cost sharing will have to eat, but uh, most of that's developer. Um, so we're going to upgrade to a six inch uh, water main, put a hydrant at the end, all new services, uh, sidewalk, storm, and then a resurfacing uh, curb and gutter. Okay. So that's that job. Maple Avenue, um, that was one kind of some residents down there uh, brought that to council last year, I believe, to have a look at that concerns about the road. So uh, that job will be to the water main's fine down there. It is, it is PVC, it's plastic, and where we've exposed it, it's fine, it's in good shape. Um, that'll be a road resurfacing. I think, believe Storm's going to stay. Camera did it, it's fine. Uh, might need to be a few repairs done on there. The connections where the sanitary from the houses connect to our infrastructure, the lot line, it's terrible. Is disaster. Yeah. Um, we found that out last year. We had a ton of infiltration down there, and once we got down and started repairing them, like, oh my God, so they kiboshed this hodgepodge to get from the five inch coming out of the house to the six inch on our side, and just it's a nightmare. So, as part of that job, we'd like to redo all those connections and put us clean out there at the lot line so that we can right. flush it if need be. And, yeah, clean that up. At the same time, we'll do the water services because we've had a numerous, like numerous leaks down there. So obviously, before we resurface the road, we like to do the water services. So we're not back in there fixing them once it's been repaved. Uh, so that's that job. Uh, Wellington, the so that is heading into the cemetery that side. Um, we're proposing to update the water main there. The water services, the sanitary main is going to stay. Uh, we had a camera and it's in good shape, so we need, don't need to touch it. Um, and then that's going to get semi-urbanized, oh. resurfaced, stormwater, brought back in for me, all that good business. Uh, the Wellington, or the Asheville Third Line job, oh, Mill Street, I missed that one, sorry. Uh, so the Mill Street is for the bridge bridge work, and uh, we'll either just going to probably do a culvert, box culvert. Yeah, the drop box. on the plate. That would be the cheapest right there, I believe. Um, and that actually influenced our decision. A couple of them didn't even mention that. They mentioned full rich construction, and it was like, <laughs> did you even look at what's? So you know, we kind of gave extra points to the to the firms that come forward with yeah, that. Exactly. Yes. Um, and the next one being the Asheville Third Line um, at Indian uh, Road intersection. So the proposed work is I'm not very familiar with this one, so forgive me, but the proposed work is for uh, intersection improvements. The intersection has been identified as high risk intersection with poor sight lines and traffic movements. Uh, the design will include two conceptual options with recommendations to deliverables include a detailed engineering design package. Um, and there are no plans for construction at this time for that work, uh, but it'll be kind of shelf ready whenever budget allows. Um, same with, uh, so just through your mirror, Paul had a question about kind of the timing of some of these projects and um, so I'll just kind of address that. Uh, Legion Street is one that's kind of got to go sooner than later to kind of stay ahead of this developments on the Mill Street side. So that one will kind of be put in the front burner. Um, that one also, because of the amount that is going to be put on the developers, it's not as pricey for us to complete that work. Um, so I, that one will have to kind of get awarded and get the ball rolling on that ASAP. Um, Maple Avenue is one we can look at. Like we haven't really budgeted it even next year. No. But it's going to be nice to have something shelf ready. Again, if funding comes down the pipe, <clears throat> you know, and we can get, so uh, part of the thing they'll be providing tender prices so that we can kind of budget, right, going forward and, and kind of start to lay these projects in when they're going to fit into the budget. Just on Maple Street, I did see some of the work down there that you guys were fixing last year and just to uh, inform the rest of council. Didn't have the inspections back there, uh, back in seventies when the way they did uh, now, uh, the holes were filled with wood that deteriorates, pipes will fall apart, and it does need work down there. I can yeah. vouch for that. Yeah, uh, Councillor Hodge, Greece. Uh, through you, Mayor. Um, in terms of the projects that don't have, so for example, Legion Street is the, the company that you're recommending. Do they, is it just the services or are they doing the build? Like, what are we purchasing? Are we purchasing the package that, so, so for the Maple Avenue, for example, in four years, somebody, we can give that to somebody else to build? Or I, does it have to be the company that works? 
Yes. So these are design and tender packages. Okay. So essentially what they'll do is they'll they'll come up with a design. Yeah. And we review it. Once it's acceptable, they'll say, okay, they'll give us like a tender price. Like this is roughly what we ballpark it at. Yeah. You can say, okay, we're moving forward with that this year or next year. Those then those design packages and the tender packages would go out to tender and okay. a construction company would bid on them and we'd have all the design and drawings and oh, okay. everything so ready to go. This one is to help so it's all the services around it. It's not the construction. That's right. All the engineering thank services. You. Yeah. All right. Okay. Councillor Warren. Um, thank you through youth and, and thank you for answering my questions that I reached out to you. Um, what I was really impressed with was to see uh, six companies coming forward. It's astounding to see the difference in pricing. And I think the staff has done a great job by making sure that all these projects are going to be shelf ready. Like by having the engineering designs, like that's the way to do it. Because as you said, when funding comes, we're You've ready. Gotta be ready. And so I just mm -hmm. wanted to say thank you for doing that. And thank you for answering my questions earlier. Yeah, you're okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Burt. He, no, he goes. Councillor <laughs> Walsh. Councillor <laughs> Walsh. Um, through you, Mayor. The Maple Avenue one, is yeah. there any potential that our developer will be helping with some of those costs? Doesn't look like it, no. no. So we actually did have them uh, clean, redo a catch basin and clean the ponds out okay. and the ditch out of those ponds. So one of the things we did find when we went to camera the, the storm sewers was we got down about halfway toward the pond and they were underwater. <laughs> so we actually couldn't camera them to see what they looked like. Okay. Part of that was the fact that the ponds were full and weren't able to outlet. So they've gone in there and they read on all that, but that side of the subdivision has been assumed so long ago, and it's not actually part of the other. Green. Yeah. Okay. So unfortunately, that baby's on us. Okay. Unfortunately, the township took, or village at that time took the road over. They shouldn't have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Deputy Mayor Burke. Uh, thank you, and through you, um, that was actually one of my questions, so thank you. The other one was, um, once those engineering design packages are are sitting there in the shelf, and then we, you know, down the line, we're budgeting for them, do they have a expiry date slash best before date? Um, Not so Other much. than the prices are obviously going to uh, change. Yeah, it's not That's, it's cheaper. Yeah. yeah. Um, but otherwise, the engineering itself should be yeah. good to go. They yeah. can sit there. Yeah, okay. providing there's no, like, changes. Yep. Okay. Into that infrastructure, then yeah, they're perfect. Good, thank you. Okay, uh, Kyle has read off the recommended motion, but I'll read it again that the Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood receives this report regarding the results for information and further that the Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood awards RFP 2024 02 to DM Wells Associates Limited. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor War, Councillor Walsh. We've had discussion, all in favor, all motions carried. Thank you, Kyle, for your time. Moving on to R3, Daryl Payne, our fire chief. Results of the R3 RFP 202401, results of the pumper tanker. Daryl, please go ahead. First of all, Council, I'd like to introduce you to our swabs. Oh, Hello, Karina Allen. How are you? Right hand man. Wow, <laughs> sorry. Right hand person. Things are going great. Looking forward to having my career in the fire service. Very good. Hey, Council. For you, your mayor. Yes, sir. We uh, put tenders out or an RFP out for a new fire truck for the old pumper out of Westwood, the old yellow, the last yellow truck we have in the fleet. Uh, it's a uh, 25 years old now, which is well past NFPA standards. It's used between 16 and 20 for a small municipality, but uh, because of a small municipality, we have some challenges with our with uh, purchasing large assets. Uh, we had to extend it to the 25 years, so that's why we're doing it now. Um, for the last seven years, the town put the council approved just the eighty thousand dollars a year towards apparatus replacement, and so we've been doing that diligently with the fire department. Uh, come to push to the place now where 2024 we wish to purchase the truck in 2025 complete to purchase because it takes a long to build it and get the, get the chassis in. So uh, we uh, put an RFP out. It was emailed personally to five credible uh, manufacturers and unfortunately we only have one and five. Which surprised us because one time they were tripping on each other to keep us happy. I think it's because of supply issues and um, and uh, COVID, 
they don't really care anymore. They're busy enough. So that was a surprise. But the truck came in uh, roughly what we anticipated. Um, so I put down the history of the old pumpers we placed in last year. It cost us six thousand dollars to keep it on the roads. It's going to cost us another four before the new truck gets here. So it is costing us. And historically, it says trucks cost us the most money in the fire department. So at the, the beginning of this year, the CEO, treasurer, and fire chief looked at uh, the financing part of it right now, and there were some irregularities. I'm going to let Alan take over here because uh, they work together to make this work. So through your, when we took a look at what was in the reserve and what was available to us versus what we were going to need, we realized that we were a little bit short of our goal. I think we'd have to come up with a little bit different strategy to get there. So one of the first things we did was take a look to see if there were any other reserves that were related to this that could potentially be used. We have 16,300 in the fire hall reserve, which that $16,000 isn't really going to do much for us of that. We get more bang for it if we move over to this. And then we had budgeted that for 2025, we would be putting $80,000 away through the reserve, which is what the council has been doing for the last number of years. If we bump that up to the 114, if we add the, the 16 in there, that gives us what we need for this purchase. Council does need to realize that by agreeing to this purchase today, that means that 114.531 will be the reserve for next year. So that's will that's, be in the budget. That is basically you're approving that right now for the 2025 budget. I don't think for what we're getting, I think, I think that is an actually very good strategy. So let's uh, just a counsel to you, or a question to you, Alan. Um, how much was it short? Um, I was trying to do the figures, just looking at what you said. Twenty-five, thirty? No, I think more? it was more like about between fifty and sixty thousand short. Okay. And part of that was probably related to the top. When we first started putting eighty thousand in, that was probably pretty good. We've seen prices have gone up. COVID, that the percentages that they were going up has significantly increased. So like I, said, I, I think with what we put forward, it's a reasonable approach to managing it. Uh, Councillor Moore. Uh, thank you for you. And I did reach out uh, to our fire chief with this question. Um, I was just wondering if there, there's any anticipated um, value to the current truck. And I think you, you kind of answered it, maybe everyone else wanted to hear if there was like a cost of what we might be expecting, because that might come off the amount that we would need for the reserve. Anything we would get would help. <laughs> but um, 2018, when we got rid of the old yellow cube van, we got $8,000 for it, which exceeded expectations. Um, the last pumper was 20, we bought the new pumper 2013, when we got $1,200 to go pumper. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's just with point. that, if the yeah. if the tank and everything was off, it would the truck be worth more with the chassis? You're probably right. Uh, that's what I was wondering to sell it that way and no, you spend the other, other for scrap. There's, there's, lot, there's lots of options, like that. Yeah. but uh, the pumper is antiquated. It needs a lot of work, and so the pumper does, not the truck. Not the truck. Okay. So, um. So. Okay, with the uh, financials, I right, continue. So what we did, we included the uh, pictures of the new truck. Yes. For you people to look at, council to look at, sorry. And with the schematic, then we included the RFP submitted by Dependable. Mm -hmm. So that was, it's quite a document and they checked every box and they exceeded a couple. We only asked for 1200 gallons or to supply 1500 gallon mm -hmm. tank also, yeah. so mm -hmm. it's more capabilities. So it's exceeded what we wanted there. And then with the scoring matrix, what that does, every line in that uh, RFP is checked. Checked by the fire chief and the deputy chief. We both came up with the same answers. So uh, they exceeded and, and they met all expectations. And, and depend what does have a good reputation at this time. That was pretty near that. That was going to be my question. Have you done work with them before? Or we have before? not. Our last two have been to TIVO, but surprisingly, they did not submit a tender. But you're, you've heard good. Yes, good yes. I've talked about the fire chiefs are using yeah. and they're very happy. Any further questions for Dale? No? Okay, we have a recommended motion then. And I do like the moving it up to the 114000 anyway. Um, just with the cost of everything, I'm very surprised that we that left it at 
the eighty thousand. Yes. Uh, just, just on that, you had the motion. Does that should that be in the motion that that money will be included in the twenty twenty five budget? Does I, that I, have to be or no? I just don't asking. think it has to be. It might not be a bad thing just to make it a little bit clearer if it comes up again. Mm -hmm. But again, it's spelled out within the report. You're approving the yeah. report, so. And I'm, I'm just wondering if we added the wording. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think it would hurt. Okay. Okay. Um, Melanie, do you have some wording you could add to that? Uh, just let me. I was trying to avoid. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I know. I have to think on the fly. I know. Um, I'm just wondering. Well, I I highlighted it here under financial implications. Maybe adding um, um, with the understanding that. Um, reserves for 2025 increase to 114 in order to be sufficient funds to complete the purchase for budget 2025 or something like and that. And moving somewhere. forward, yeah. that should be set at 114 for a few years ahead, right? Or was it just the, just the one year? Just the one year? I would suggest just the one year because we'll come back in 2026 and I will With, tell you right now that that reserve is going to be zero, so we yeah. might ask for more than eighty thousand or yeah. more than a, right. You know, without knowing exactly where we are at that point, exactly. okay. We don't want to anything, but we'll there'll definitely be an ask for twenty twenty six for yeah. that reserve. Yeah, All right. I I just I just wondered if we should have the wording in there. So have you kind of got that, Melanie. I think if we did and further that direct staff to include Perfect. in the twenty twenty five budget, that would cover us. I would say. Okay. 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 And Daryl, you're okay with having a zero reserve? Balance at the end of this. Like, my truck. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Start again. Yeah. Bring yeah. So, do you want to read this motion, Mel? <laughs> Seeing that you're rewriting it, please. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> I'm not getting thrown under the bus. <laughs> That the I Council of the Township yeah. of Asheville Nord accepts this report for information and further that the Council of the Township of Asheville Nord authorizes the mayor and myself to execute the agreement between dependable energy, excuse me, dependable emergency vehicles in the township for the manufacture, supply and delivery of a dependable pumper tanker mounted on a 2024 Freightliner M2 106 chassis and further that the Township of Asheville Norwood directs staff to include the prescribed amount in the 2025 budget. All right. Yeah. And I have a mover for that. Uh, Deputy Mayor Bird, Councillor Walsh. Any further discussion? All in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you, Dara. Thank you. Seamus, Manager of Community Center Parks and Facilities. You had a long report too, sir. Thank you, Thank you Mayor. So this staff report is uh, for the Asheville Valley Community Center fees and char uh, charges to update them. Uh, so the recommendation that Council of Township of Asheville Norwood accepts this report regarding the Asheville Valley Community Center fees and char charges bylaw update for information. Further that the Council of the Township of Asheville Norwood authorizes staff to present an updated fees and charges bylaw at a future meeting for Council. So in 2013, uh, staff made a decision uh, to switch away from changing rates come January 1 to May 1st. Uh, the reason being is that's pretty much when the ice goes in and out. So it's tough for a renter to sign a contract and they've signed a contract, but you, no one knows what the price is gonna be. Uh, so that's why we, the reason for this the switch last year, uh, staff felt the recommendation went well. It's easier to just see it. Uh, Queen bees, you're paying this your whole year. Yeah. You're not going, what are we paying? Is it going up? Is it going down? Uh, currently, the full-time staff are in their third season of ice rentals. Over the three years of learning, gathering experience, thinking of new ways to improve, thinking of new ideas, and monitoring other townships and or municipality fees and charges, staff are recommending the following rates. Uh, in Schedule A, to be effective May 1st, 2024. So going through Schedule A, uh, the ones on the left highlighted in orange would be new fees staff are wishing to implement. Uh, ones highlighted in red would be fees looking to remove. And ones that aren't highlighted would be current fees that we want to be changing. So first column, previous fees. So you can see previous fees, which is two years ago. Current fees is like current one we're in, which would be set to expire April 30th. And the proposed would come into effect 
May 1st, 2024 to April 30th, 2025. So starting with uh, the advertising. Uh, so ice reserve reserve, keeping it the same. Uh, the wall, uh, bumping it up from 140 plus HST, 145. So that's all the ones that hang above the benches, as well as there's four that are right behind the benches. Uh, so it went up $5 this year. We're looking to put up another $5. The year during COVID, it actually, everyone got it for half price because we weren't really open. So we, we think moving up $5 is not the end of the world. Uh, the boards, so bumping that up five bucks, what's the HSC? So that's all the ones that are on the right boards, the actual ice surface. They tend to only be on the side that you can't see from the, uh, the crowd. Obviously, if we ever looked at the demand of putting them on the stand side, you probably have to come up with a new rate for that because if you're sitting in the crowd, you look at the benches, you can't see that. Right. Uh, the ice, uh, that's a nice logo. Obviously, this past year too, we did a sponsorship package which kind of had that that had uh, sponsors could pay for ice, as well as boards, uh, as well as uh, lobby and public skating. Uh, so then if we move down to the Millennium Room, so obviously licensed and non-licensed deposits, keeping them the same. Uh, social event, so social events kind of free for us. So that's pretty much any event that's in here uh, that's or at the town hall that's over five hours. So. Person A wants to rent, uh, rent the room for six hours. They currently would pay 288 plus HST, which staff felt that's uh, way too cheap. So that's why the reason we're bumping it up to 300. Uh, social uh, uh, event, maximum five hours. Currently it's 27 an hour. We looked at bumping it up $5 to 32. Quite frankly, where can you find a room of this space that you have to pay $30.51 for an hour to use it? Uh, we also implemented a youth organization. So the reason behind that is uh, we, we have had some pushback in the past from user groups uh, about having to pay for space. So at least this way we're, we're honoring the current price. So if a user group is renting this for a meeting, uh, if it's a youth organization, so for example, we have some girl guides, you're, you're keeping it the same so they won't ex experience an increase next year because obviously you want to help them out as well as you want to make sure this room's trying to be utilized mm -hmm. to the maximum of its capabilities. So uh, the Friendship Club, that's the seniors. They play cards here every Wednesday. So currently, uh, the reason we had to change this current year we're in, so previously, they uh, did 263 per month plus HSP. That inc incorporated every Wednesday as well as once a Saturday they do a tournament. We got away from that because coming out of COVID, they haven't done tournaments. Uh, since then, in late 2023, they've started bringing tournaments back. Uh, so keeping that at 45, obviously, uh, they're a group that I think that's going to have to stay at 45 for a while. Uh, if it goes to 4501, uh, I'm pretty sure you'll hear about it. Uh, so the one thing we do want to implement, though, is the tournament right. So once a month, typically the second Saturday of the month, they have from about 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock the tournament here. So the reason we want to implement the new rate is Kind of a weekend's kind of a prime time date. So at least yeah. you're paying 50, uh, 10 extra dollars, so you're getting a little more than a Wednesday versus someone wants to come in and rent the whole day, you're, you could have got 300 bucks. So they tend to kind of have it. Uh, obviously the last couple, we kind of had to bump them out because we previously had renters before they came to us and said, we're returning. Well, now they've given us the dates. I believe they take off two months in the summer. Other than that, the other 10 months they're here. Mm -hmm. Unless it falls, obviously, I think this year, their October meeting uh, tournament on the Saturday would fall during Thanksgiving. So they're not going to do that, right. uh, depending on uh, the months of that. So that's why we implemented that. Uh, wedding, uh, this is a new rate. Again, currently uh, in here, we haven't had a specified wedding rate. So now this is pretty straightforward that there's two options. So one includes you come in 12 o'clock the day before you set up, you have the room until 11 o'clock the day after. So that would be a rate of 600 per event plus HST. But that also helps with us knowing this person rents it. We know these days are already blocked off. You're not having someone phone after be like, oh, can we, well, we have to find out when they're using it. Because that's happened in the past where you've had your, your phoning person A who's had it saying, what time are you actually coming in for your event? Because someone else wants to inquire. And then obviously another option, if just someone doesn't want to pay that, they can pay the 400 per day plus HST. That's just for the day of. 
The reason we also have that higher than the social event is there's more upkeep. You're, you're setting up for 150 to 200 people versus setting up for 50. Yeah. Uh, it tends to be our events, so you're more, you're more clean up, right? The floors, you know, you're, you're spending more time mopping and cleaning them up. So that's why we wanted to implement that. Bartender fee, uh, that would be a new one too. So a couple events in 2023 that kind of really made us think of this is currently right now there's no charge. So someone wants to rent the bar, to rent the millennium room and open the bar, the user pays nothing. So we had a couple family functions that brought in about $40. And then we had another one that we actually told them the bar unfortunately was not open and they kind of pushed back saying, we didn't know it was open, we went elsewhere. So we did open it with a baby shower and that one did 50 bucks. So I bet you 40 of it was pop, not even bar. So at least this way, now a user has, hey, am I gonna pay the 44.25 or do I really want it? Or if I'm not gonna pay it, uh, then they're not gonna have it. The other reason though, some other places do where if it's a big enough bar, you remove the fee, but you don't want to do that because then you're promoting drinking. Yeah. And then with our liquor license and we're the one serving them that the liability. So at least this way it's just included. If you'd like the bar open, 50 bucks. At least that way helps too. If a group does have a small bar, at least the $50 helps pay for some supplies or staff wages and kind of you're not at all of it. Youth committee, uh that one I it's been here in the past. I don't know if that was way back when kind of the township had youth committees running it. Uh so that one. We still have to decide whether we keep it the same. We very rarely ever have that. Uh, normally, again, you have the social group or now moving forward, you have the youth organization group. Uh, kitchen, this is one thing too. So access to the kitchen, uh, currently it's been 70 bucks. We're proposing it goes up to 7301. We're also proposing a partial use. So this is another thing, uh, reason we'd like to implement this is sometimes people will just use the room and don't use the kitchen. And next thing you know, it's staff going after it, you're cleaning it. Uh, you're doing the dishes, you're changing the garbage, you're sweeping. So at least this way, someone wants to use partial, which is fridge, fridge freezer counters. They can have access. If they don't, um, if they don't choose the partial or the full, what we're going to do moving forward is locking it, so that we, then we know no one's in there. Same as this room, uh, we lock it if no one's in it. So you're not coming in after going. Council's having a meeting. We show up and someone used the washroom and it's disgusting or there's garbage everywhere. So that's. What we would look to do if no one uses the kitchen it's simply locked we know that uh coffee provided we haven't done that in a while so that's why we would be looking at removing pay in a frame rental uh this is new so this is the uh frame that was purchased for the uh light up the uh township event with a little ribbon on the top so i guess staff have said in the past that they've noticed there's some groups using it so they would like to implement a price to use it uh and then obviously Town hall staff would have to put it somewhere where it's out of the way, but then it's easy to move it if someone does use it. Uh, recreation off season. Uh, so the arena ice surface, same thing, making sure we have the wedding reception included in there. Uh, same thing, you have two options. You can do the day only, or you do the 12 p.m. day before until 11 after. Uh, arena surface, college of jamboree, uh, putting that in there to clearly we do have a current jamboree. I know someone's inquired about a potential other one, or if we ever want concerts, uh, we have that in there. Fundraising events, keeping that the same. Uh, not profit functions, keeping that the same. Ball hockey, I'll pick that up. Uh, obviously, fifty-four dollars an hour is not feasible. Obviously, we have uh, ball hockey returning, so that's why we looked at increase it to three dollars. Uh, bags of ice, bumping that up to three dollars a bag. Uh, lounge and bar, we thought we actually did this last year, but uh, we're going to make sure we do it this year. Bumping every drink up 25 cents. Uh, staff are aware that the bartenders, it's going to lead to them having less tips. Uh, but the we are basing it off kind of a couple other local and other places that do have bars. Kind of, I know one of our staff has been here a while and they think this 450 for a domestic beer has been like that for. Since they were before, they were 19. <laughs> so looking at bumping that up. Recreation, skate sharpening, uh, bumping that up to seven. We obviously can only do a basic cut, but you go anywhere else, you're paying up to 10 bucks. So we realize too, it's, you want to make it feasible for your staff. We notice uh, a lot of people when they attend the free public skates, that's where a lot of skate sharpening is done. Yeah. Right? People haven't skated in a year. All of a sudden they go, hey, you know what? I'm pulling my skates up that they're covered in rust. 
So we feel too that that price hasn't went up in a long, long time. So bumping it up to seven, obviously that's a price too. You have to have an even number, right? You don't want staff having to go through it. Oh, we're out of corridors now. We have to reimburse the float. Uh, public skating, keeping that two bucks. Uh, public skating sponsorship. We we felt the reason to keep that the same is also kind of you get a little bit of a deal for sponsoring because we are fortunate enough with our generous sponsors that a lot of our skates are sponsored and it's amazing to see the difference between a sponsored skate and a public skate in the tournament. Huh. Like, wow. Even though it's only two bucks a person, but you, you have a family of four that's that eight bucks that maybe they could be using for food or whatever. So that's why keeping that the same. Uh, minor hockey and figure skating, bumping it up two dollars to answer Councillor Walsh's question. In the past, it's kind of went up to. I think maybe next year we look at a percentage because I was talking to Councillor Bob Screams earlier. Two dollars on a hundred dollars is a higher percentage than two dollars on one hundred and fifty. And then this way, it's just a simple. Hey, every year, if it's a two percent, if it's a one point five, whatever. Uh, I, th I think doing that next year. The reason being too is. What we've tried to do in the past two years uh, outside minor hockey, so going down to them uh, for fees. So not last year, the year before, them and minor hockey and figure skating actually paid the same price. So we bumped it up to a $5 difference two years ago. We bumped it up to a $7 difference currently, and we're pro proposing it goes up to a 10. So this time next year, if we implement that all rates are subject to change to go up a maximum of 2%, because right now that that uh, five dollar increase is going to be more of a percentage than the two. We also feel that way it's easier to justify, or also you're bringing in more money when we do rent our ice to outside organizations. Because I know in the past uh, when we had a meeting with minor sports, they kind of made a comment, and we did say, "Well, they're paying seven more." And he's like, "Oh, seven more dollars." Well, seven more dollars on a lot of hours does add up, mm -hmm. and so that's why we're proposing this year that. Hopefully, if we can keep that $10 difference, maybe if it goes to 15, because those user groups are too still coming here, they are uh, salivating at the 139 versus paying over 200 in Peter Rowe. Obviously, right. Peter Rowe is different than Asphalt and Norwood. Day uh, Ice, uh, keeping that the same. Last year, we bumped it up uh, to an even 100 bucks, which is easier to work with than 97.18. Simply for the fact that someone pays cash, it's an even 100, you're not worried about giving them $2.80. Hockey skills, keeping that the same. Uh, I think it's important to keep that the same. They're down to one class for a semester only. I, I think we, yes, you probably could increase it, but also are you going to increase it where next thing you know, no one comes and during the day, we don't have a lot of rentals. So right. bringing them the two to three days for first semester is a bonus. Uh, Nord, so this is another thing we look at changing. So uh, separating it to a Nord and district minor sport rate would pay 115 up from 107. Our simple reason being there is we actually, as a facility, would make less money on a day we do a tournament because we are Saturday, Sundays full already. So at least you're saying to minor hockey, we are giving you a break. You're, you're saving the uh, $12 an hour, but like we can't be giving you 107 when regularly you'd be pulling in 129 to 134. Mm -hmm. And then also this year, implementing an outside minor hockey. So we do have Peterborough tournaments, so they'd be paying 10 more dollars an hour. So again, the day that Peterborough comes in here, which bumps Norwood out, well, again, we're making more money than charging you the same rate. Uh, pickup hockey, so pumping that up to 65 minimum. So that would be a group of people that, or maybe it's shinny rate or a family rate, that, that's kind of the cheapest rate we're supposed to charge. Uh, outside minor hockey, again, to touch on that, bumping it up. Uh, and then these are two other rates we, we'd be looking to implement. Birthday party, uh, so we do have a lot of those. Uh, we did discuss potential the partnership of is there a rate for an hour of ice hour in here? But the reason we didn't do that is that is way more available in the restaurant. So you can't have, oh, you know what? Well, we're not going to sell zero birthday party rates because the person wanted this room, but it's booked. So, and then that way, again, for the family, birthday parties tend to be smaller amount of people. So you're giving them a little bit of a deal, but you're also still charging. Uh, and I'll obviously uh, do two more rates. So late ice and, uh, for Norwood or figure skating and then outside minor hockey. So this could also be tied into early ice uh, in August. So August and April, beginning of May, because it's warmer out, your, connect, your system could be working harder because you're, you're bringing in more. Also, to the kind of incentive to 
hey, you, you want us to keep the ice in an extra week longer this year while you're paying for it instead of paying the regular price. Uh, switching to parks. So baseball tournament, uh, JJ Stewart Diamond, uh, bumping that up to 175 from 163. That's been like that a, 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 for a while. Also implementing a two diamond rate. So the reason it's only uh, 40 more dollars is uh, I don't really know the relationship. Like we've yet to have to kind of- We'll just leave it. that. Yeah. That way, if <laughs> someone does come to us, we can be like, hey, you know what? We have collected fees. Here you go. Uh, and then obviously minor ball offering them, uh, they pay the 175, but they get both diamonds. Because again, they're minor ball, they're, you're, you're saving them the money. Uh, Westwood Diamond, looking at removing that. That's been used once in the, the three plus years I've been here. And only reason that was because the windstorm knocked their uh, back stuff over. Uh, and then Township Parks, uh, picnic shelters. So we have Asphalt Park, Community Center Park, Norwood Park, which is done, and Westwood Park is coming this year. So putting them all together, keeping them at the $32. Uh, the last line Community Center, the reason we removed that is that way we're putting all park shelters as one. We don't need to have four line items for the same thing. And then minor ball, uh, keeping it the same. Next year, we'll, we'll look with them at doing um, similar to what we do with the three pitch league of doing set price. Simple for them. I think it would be good for them is they know up front how much it's going to be, right? So that you can plan at the beginning, hey, we know we're paying X amount of dollars, therefore a registration instead of paying per hour. Well, if you have more teams, you're using it more. You have less teams, you're using it less. And then other clubs, the three pitch leagues, bumping that up uh, because, again, uh, if Thursday night co ed league has seven teams. If you implement what we increased by divide by seven, it's like 10 bucks a team. So uh, just kind of get, and then on that too, we did have uh, last year we were fortunate enough to pick up a Friday night women's league that got bumped from our block uh, because of time and space. So it was nice to implement. We actually had the two leagues last year. Yes. And they're just Thursday, Friday, which is nice too. Those are nights minor ball tend not to already use, so we're not displacing them. Uh, so, just uh, so Premier, is it just looking at other local clubs? Do you mean per season one thousand fifty? Correct. Okay. So, so I assume that. So the three pitch, so the co-ed league and the Friday night, they last year would pay ninety eight. That's for the season, which right. like, however long they run, plus a year on tournament. So at least this way too, uh, not only charging a little more, but the lack of winter we had, maybe the, the time one we were open in March. Mm -hmm. And if someone wants to start right away, you've kind of already planned for that. So financial implications, if approved, this will come into effect the first of this year, thereby uh, affect parks and recreation budget until April 30th, 2025. Uh, engagement disengages all user groups from this facility. Conclusion, so, Due to the important role that the Asphalt and Art Community Center plays in Asphalt and Art and adjacent townships, township staffs are recommended that council proceeds with the fees and charges bylaw update effective May 1st. Great job, Seamus. Uh, very thorough uh, report. And I like how you do your due diligence while so you're looking at the other uh, centers around and comparing prices on those too. I was reading that. Uh, very interesting. Uh, so we have a recommended motion uh, that the Council of Township of Asphodel Norwood accepts this report for information and further that the Council of Township of Asphodel Norwood authorize the staff to present an updated fees charge by law at a future meeting for Council. Moved by Councillor Walsh with comment. with comment. Set the move by or second by Deputy Mayor Burt. Go ahead, Councillor Walsh. Yeah, through you, Mayor. Uh, Chairman, thank you very much. A lot of work we've gone into this, a lot of experience over the last couple of years of learning what works and what doesn't work. And I, I love the idea uh, that the mayor spoke to that we've got competitive rates from neighboring municipalities to look at. I think we've got a very fair price. I don't think we want to overprice ourselves because reality is we do get a lot that comes out from Peterborough. Uh, we are costing advantageous, but they've got two new arenas going to be in there come next September that people may not want to travel. So I don't. I think we've been very fair. We'll look at it, see what kind of impact that has on us next year, and then look at the whole thing again in a couple of years. But no, thorough, well done, and uh, this may have some kind of a race to look at. So thank you very I'm much. Sure We're touching that. So the new twin pad that's currently being built is supposed to be open 
maybe not September, but this time next year, it will almost be a full season. So you'll know how much maybe your other uh, smaller towns, your Camelford, your autonomy, maybe they choose to go there. Uh, but also, we again, you could move stuff up, but it's also you want to like, like for skating club, minor hockey, queen bees, like I'm sure we could still charge way more and be filled, but like also, like I know from speaking of minor half, uh, minor hockey, once they remove the gate fee, it just went like that. Right, like yeah. price of insurance, I'm sure for skating club, Queen Bees, it's continuing to go up. And it's nice that kind of your local groups do kind of get a little bit of a, not a, it's not a deal. No, but, but you're, you're saying, hey, you know what? Wow. If you look, it'd be interesting if minor sports were to look at, if they used all their ice and had to pay it at the uh, outside minor hockey, how much that would actually save them? Oh, I know. Like I say, have hundreds and hundreds of hours. Any further questions of Seamus? All in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you, Seamus, again. Thank you. Moving along to R5, Asset Management Plan for 2024. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. One of the big things over the last couple of years the province has really been focusing on is asset management. They have brought in some new regulations. Regulation 588-17 kicks into effect this year. Each municipality in Ontario is going to be required to provide an up-to-date asset mm -hmm. management plan. So there was some work that was done on this before I got here. Our tender had gone out to uh, citywide. They had responded for it. We had confirmed that we did put money, there was money put in the budget for this year for this work. So really what this report is basically saying, we'd like to engage with them so that we can meet our deadlines, or at least try and come as close as we can to meeting that deadline of July 1st, to have our updated asset management plan into the province. And there is some work that will continue after that. But right now our focus is more on getting the 2024 piece done than anything else. Thank you, Alan. Um, I'll state the recommended motion that the Council of Township of Asphodel Norwood accepts, acknowledges, and approves this report regarding asset management plan for 2024. Moved by Deputy Mayor Burke with a quick comment. Second by Councillor War. Comment. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Burke. Thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, thanks, Alan, for that. Um, just, I know we're we're accepting their their proposal and certainly I'm sure you've noticed the contact list um, as the client has changed because Peter's not there. I'm sure you'll be added and perhaps somebody else. So I just want to make sure you, uh, you know, we were aware of that. And I did reach out to, to Alan and likely everyone I'm trying to find it here. I'm scrolling um, in the, in the report where there's the, um, Date. the out of scope work and there's a, there's a lot of in scope work, but there's an awful lot of out of scope work. So I didn't know if those were, you know, nice to haves or they have to be in there. So maybe if you could address that. Um, I think they sort of start off as nice to be haves, but eventually as we move forward with the legislation, they will become thou must haves. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what we're hoping is depending on on how it goes and what we get back from is that maybe even some of that work, potentially we could do some of it in house so that we're not just farming it out to these guys, but we kind of need to get this year looked after first before, but as we go forward, we will be providing updates to council on what's going on with the asset management, and we will get a copy of the report that goes into the province as well. So hopefully once we get this year done, then we can start putting our plan in place a little bit better and figuring out who's doing exactly what. Perfect. Thank you. Councillor Wolf. Thank you for you. And I did reach out to Alan that just so the rest of council is aware. Um, so this was good until March 11th for this proposal, but you assured me that they are honoring no, the we, price. We did, mm -hmm. we did have that conversation with them. And even though technically the contract hasn't been awarded to them yet, they have started to do some work on our behalf. One of the other challenges we had was with the public work manager leaving. He was about to walk out the door with quite a bit of information. So they did have conversation with him, even though they didn't technically have anything from us. I, I in a very proactive approach by them, which we very much appreciated. They did reach out to him and start some of those conversations, gathering as much information from him as they could. So we are still good with price and 
have kind of got a bit of a running start going on. Just a follow ahead. For you. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's good because, you know, I think in previous conversations before your arrival, I think we were under the impression some of this had been started to be tackled. And so uh, making sure that we find all the information that uh, has already been done would be, you know, really relevant as well. So anyways, thank you for your reaching out and uh, answering my questions. So council, I read the motion. Everybody in favor? Motion's carried. You're still on, uh, Alan? I, I, got, I got a couple going on. So yeah. Yes, you do. Is that a coupon? Get two, we get your third point three. So this is your second one. Um, so this is a report that was done on the municipal scholarship program. So the recommendation is the council uh, receive, accept this report regarding the municipal scholarship program for information and further the council adapt the municipal scholarship program as presented or with your additions or suggestions that you might have. So one of the things I got here are this was a piece of work that the clerk had already started and had done some really good work on. So I'm, I'm stealing some of her credit here or some of her glory, but that's okay. She's good. So we finished putting this together. One of the things I did was also reach out to the high school principal and, and had a quick conversation with her to say, hey, this is something that we're working on. You know, what level of involvement would you like? How would you like us to try and manage that? And she and I had a good conversation and I don't anticipate any issues at all. I think we've got a reasonably good application process. I mean, hopefully that's going to generate some positive interest from the, from the students who are going to be applying for this. And then we'll be coming back to say, hey, we've got 50 great people here who are applying for you. Know, 50, <laughs> 50, 50 people, whatever, five. And then we can give you some recommendations on uh, just how to proceed from there. Okay. Okay, Council, the recommended motion is that the Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood accepts this report for information and further that the Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood adopts the Municipal Scholarship Program as presented or with revis revisions suggested by members of Council. Uh, Deputy, or sorry. Councillor War, with comment, please. With comment, seconder. Uh, Councillor Hodge Greaves, go uh, ahead. Thank you through you. Um, yeah, this was brought um, to council last uh, last uh, year, mm -hmm. and thank May, and thank you for the work that you have done and uh, bringing it forward like this. I just want to make one comment that this may never happen again in this room. All five of the people that are in council graduated from the high school. And that may never happen again. You know, our community is growing and it mm -hmm. says a lot that all of us came from, uh, you know, that similar background of one school here in the, in the township at that time. And I remember uh, being able to get a, a scholarship first really when I graduated many years ago. We won't say how many, but I mean, it, it is, it's, uh, you know, it's that sense of achievement and, you know, goal going forward. So anyways, I just wanted to mention that and thank you. Just, uh... Question: Was that an organization that's no longer around? No more was give you that scholarship. Uh, it was the Land of the Shining Water. Oh, okay, grant, yeah, one that I received at that time. That's many, many. I don't even know. I know the IOD used to give out a yeah. lot of them, but yeah. there's different organizations that just aren't around aren't anymore around. to contribute. Go ahead. Yeah, just a uh, moment. I, I know um, the scholarship program at the high school is one of the highest in the county. They give a lot of awards because you have Havelock and Norwood together, yeah. and. Um, this is a lot in the community and the, the support for their students. So I think it's, um, you know, very important that, you know, it's it's probably been a long time coming and we likely should have thought of it before, but I know, I think Councillor War brought it forward last year yeah. and I think it's a great idea and long overdue. Um, so thanks, Ellen and Melanie for fantastic. Okay, we've read the motion, all in favor? Motion's carried. Alan, you have another one. <laughs> so management action list. Um, I, I think you may have noticed that today's council meeting is probably the longest one we've had since I got here. So we are starting to get moving on some things and some things are starting to happen. Uh, we've got another one that's coming up on April 9th. And we've got a number of pieces that are bringing back to that one. I expect that one to be a busy council as well. We are on track pretty much on the tasks that we have. There are some big pieces that are coming up later this year, but at this point in time, everything that has a date attached to it, I believe those are all good dates. 
there are some pieces of the, of the council priorities that are the ongoing that work is being done on them as well. And the other updates that will be coming out of them or the dates that will be attached to those. All right. Any questions on, on the actual stuff? Well, I'm just looking ahead uh, on here on April 9th. Some tenders that are were the tenders put out. I believe those are ones that are through the county that we're a part of, so they'll be oh, okay. information. It's the ones I'm thinking it is. All right. Okay, council. Okay, now we're at the. Go ahead. Whatever. Go ahead. I, or do you want to move it? No, I. I'll move it with comment. Okay, Does very good. Seconder, <laughs> Councillor Walsh, now your comment. Okay. Uh, I reached out to CAO Hewitt. Um, I'm going to be zooming into the meeting on the 23rd of April, but I would like to hear them. As I, I'm concerned about the technology, so I have asked if maybe the facilities master plan could move to a different meeting. CAO Hewitt will look at that. I'm just you know, with the internet connectivity of the hotel and here and being the first time we've done a hybrid, I just had some concerns around that one and wanting to participate fully in, in that discussion in particular. So if that can be looked at, that would be great. All righty. Yeah, we, we can look at that. You said that, that's their tentative date right now. Okay. I, I need to hear back from them there with the yes, they're going to be if they're going to be asked to be pushed to the next one, and it's not going to be an issue yeah. at all. If not, then we can see what we can uh, to bring that. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor? Motion's carried. Moving along to C9. What's Council's wishes with respect to C9, the municipality of Brighton, right? Share services. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Mayor Bird. To receive, it's not something we've looked at here, and no. but that one it's to receive. Okay, second by Councillor Walsh. Any discussion? All in favor? Motions carried. C10, City City of uh, Twenty West Housing Fund. Uh, Deputy Mayor Bird. Uh, yeah, I I brought this forward, um, Mayor. Mayor Wilford brought this um, to everyone's attention at county last week, and it was supported. Um, certainly, there's been some new funding since Same we had our meeting on it. last Wednesday that is coming forward, and details are to to be forthcoming. But um, I do think this is a is an important piece for us as a growing community, and um, county supported it last week, so I wanted to bring it forward here, and so move to we'll support. support. And second by Councillor Walsh. Any further discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. Town of Lincoln. Town of Lincoln. Urgent need for increased funding to libraries and museums in Ontario. <laughs> Councillor Hodge Grease. I'd like to, um, in support, I think it is shocking how little the levy has increased over the last few years. And I think they, libraries and museums are incredibly important. So I'd like to support that. And second by Deputy Mayor Burke. Yeah, no. And comment. Uh, Deputy Mayor Bird. Uh, yeah, I threw that on too. It was on the uh, the agenda for the county last week. And um, just so everyone knows, the, the operating grant log, PLOG operating grant for the, uh, for the library, um, is right around $8,500. And it's been that way for over two decades. It hasn't changed. So that just means all of the money that it takes to run a library, which has changed dramatically over the last 20 years, falls on the municipal taxpayer. So it's quite ridiculous. Yes. Um, we don't have a museum, but it falls under the same category. So yeah, yeah. Councilor Um, with, uh, Just a comment for you. Um, yeah, we do have a heritage center. It's not uh, designated as a museum, but the heritage center, it, we're finding it so challenging to find any funding for things that we'd like to do there as well. And, uh, you know, you're kind of um, in a spot where you get some support from the municipality. So you're not eligible for a lot of these grants that are out there for heritage centers and museums. And it, you get a little bit of help, but you don't have enough to do anything big. So I'm fully in support of this. Yeah, thank you. Uh, 
That's all discussion. All in favor? Motion's carried. Uh, Councilor Liaison Reports. Councilor Liaison Reports. Does anybody have anything to bring forward? Councilor Walsh. Yeah, just, I'll give a verbal if I did send this out to everybody. I apologize. I missed the council package deadline, but uh, just quickly from special events, we had a meeting on Monday, March 11th. Um, recently, our treasurer was able to provide us with a current balance, which really is awesome because it allows the community to know how much money they have spent and how much we have left to spend for the, for the number of activities we have coming up. Uh, just quickly, Family Day, uh, from all reports, we figured in the neighborhood of 400 people attended Family Day between the two facilities. Overall feedback was great. People liked the two venues, enjoyed the complimentary pizza and hot dogs, loved the horse wagon rides, would like to have had more time for horse wagon rides, but it also comes down to a cost. But we're going to look at if that's something we want to do next year, maybe we make the route shorter around the community center versus back and forth. But uh, consideration for earlier start time from younger families was, was mentioned to us. So that's really a good piece of feedback. And uh, website is where most people learn of the event. Um, quickly, showcase is coming up on June 15th. It is, um, it is set in stone to go this year on June 15th. We do have our title sponsor confirmed. That will be announced shortly. We do have two secondary sponsors that I came forward that we might utilize them towards uh, using some funding for entertainment options for that day. Uh, we have removed the raffle table for 2024. We just found that we can't be, we typically we can't be continually going out to businesses in our community on a regular basis asking for it. And I really, people don't come to showcase to get a raffle price. Um, so that was kind of a, one of the change. It'll be from 10 till two. It'll be in the Millennium Room, outside the Millennium Room, and we'll also be using the, uh, the Arena Floor. And I think the last quickly piece is we talked very quickly about Canada Day, and we have an alignment from the group that the fireworks, we did have confirmation that as long as they're well stored, which the fire department are, that those can be actually kept on late market and not let off on Canada Day. Everybody feels the same that. Hey, that's Hastings. That's Trent Hills Hastings event. Let them have that. We'll do our we'll do our event in Canada Day. More discussion at our next meeting, but there is thoughts of maybe making it a, a shorter day, which was some feedback that came from from all council. So, and just quickly, the last piece is um, with Trails Committee uh, down in numbers. Um, the Special Events Committee have agreed to bring them into the fold. It's just really one more event, which is Trails Day on June first and. The committee will take care of it. Thank you, Councillor Walsh. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor Walsh. Yes, thank you for being there. Um, just a couple updates for um, the BAC. We have an upcoming meeting on Tuesday at 2 p.m. at the town hall. And I'm uh, looking forward to getting uh, some, uh, you know, the have the committee back on track and um, we'll see what comes forward from those discussions on that day. Um, also from the cultural and heritage, we have a couple of uh, joint projects that we're looking at with um, the Asphodel Norwood Library. We're meeting with um, Trish, uh, the CAO there about a community cookbook uh, possibility. And we'll, uh, we're also looking um, at hosting the Irish Club is coming on Wednesday, April 3rd, because they want to talk about doing uh, some combined event for the 200th anniversary of the Peter Robinson Settlers. So they're visiting the Heritage Center on the 3rd. And um, we also have our upcoming Asphodel Norwood um, show and tell. And it, thank you for everyone at the table that shared. And thank you for Melanie and staff for doing the um, the posters up. People like them. And I hope if anyone has an interesting item or story that they could come and join us for that event. It should be a fun night. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Any other comments? Okay, CAO clerk treasure list. Alan or Melanie, do you have anything for council? I don't have anything, Ms. Mayor. For you, Mayor, I'm just going to mention with the long weekend upon us, there's a couple of service changes with uh, garbage collection. So anybody who receives Friday collection is being moved to Saturday. Just wanted to put that out there. It's on the website and the socials, of course, but just to reiterate that. No changes on Easter Monday, no changes in recycling, just the one change for garbage collection. And the municipal office will be closed Good Friday and Easter Monday. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much for that. Uh, general business. Does anybody have anything they'd like to discuss, Councillor Walsh? Uh, just more of an FYI to all council. I just kind of stumbled across this. 
Peterborough uh, and Cortha Chamber of Commerce, Commerce are going to be hosting an event down at Lang Pioneer Village on April 23rd, which is a Tuesday because it's also Council Day. But the uh, Bonnie Clark, who's our warden, uh, will be there and is going to really kind of talk about everything that's going on in Peterborough County and everything that's going on in the province because, my God, mm. <laughs> Warden Clark is everywhere. She is. Uh, but there is a breakfast that morning. It's at Lang. It's it's $20 to go to the breakfast. Uh, if you're interested, you can go to the website or I can send you details. Go. Deputy Mayor Burke. Uh, thank you through you, Mayor. Um, I just happened to think of something when Councillor Moore mentioned about the funding for the Heritage Center that you're not considered a museum. Is that an option to take the Heritage Center from that to museum status? I'm just throwing that out there. Just had an idea. I have no idea. I'm sure there'd be pros and cons and looking at Alan shaking his head, but I just, I just happened to think of it, made a note, throwing it out there. We don't have to deal with it. It's just a thought. Easy answer because I don't know. Okay. But it's an interesting idea. Yeah. Like, yeah. as you just said, you can't get funding because of that. So, what can you do to change the status? I, I don't know. Just throwing it out there. Right. Or would there be other funding streams that are better opportunities of funding streams as a museum versus? I, I don't know. I just know that sometimes we're, uh, we can't because we do have support from the township with things like, say, trillion grants. We uh, a lot of times we don't qualify because we do get a little bit of funding mm -hmm. for the upkeep of it and the building, right? Yeah. That we're in. So it's a great area for that. I don't know. I know that the Legion has just applied for museum status because they have Philip Lawrence here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know. I Maybe we could reach out to the Legion um, people with the museum that they have that they see what benefits it would have been for them. I don't just, know. Just a thought. Yeah, no, it's right there. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other general business, uh, Councillor Ward? Um, sorry, just one other thing that you know it just keeps popping up on our platforms, and uh, and I I know that um, Melanie has put out some uh, things on the solar eclipse that's happening, and um, I think there's a lot of misconceptions and. No. Uh, the awareness should be there about what it is and our nearest municipality that's going to almost experience that would be Brighton and they are expecting several hundred thousand people like I, I believe Niagara Falls is expecting a million people between Brighton and Belleville they're expecting I don't know I think uh, it's pretty high numbers and so I just think that maybe some more communication if we can. I think that what you've sent out so far has been excellent, but just to make sure our residents are aware or if anyone is thinking of heading down to Brighton because it's only 20 minutes away, um, maybe they should be aware of what they're going to encounter as well. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I have. I just thought it was interesting and it's a once in a lifetime event for us. It is. Anybody else? General business? I just got uh, my lovely clerk here to uh, send you all an email. Um, and I think we should be supporting this. I just got it this morning. I did not see it until I was coming in here from Puccini's office. And it's about the ethanol plant. Uh, they're talking about closure. And I don't think it's right. Deputy Mayor Burke? Um, yeah, I will make a motion that we send a letter of support slash concern to our MP, MPP, and I guess Michelle Ferrari as well, because she will be our MP hey. in a short time. So two MPs, our MPP, um, yeah, to to see, um, you know, get, I guess, get more details more on this. More details. Right. I haven't had a chance. I have no idea what you're talking about. I know. I don't think Paula even got no, this earlier no, or Barry. Uh, that's, I just had it sent to you, but if you take a look at the first paragraph, it's sort of, uh, can't open the, do, would it be possible to put this in correspondence for our next agenda, perhaps? Oh, yes, we and could do that. Or do you think it should be done now, just to give everyone a chance to look it over? Is there a timing component? I don't know. Yeah. I, when I read it, I don't know if there's a timing component, but... Yeah. Does it say that there is? Um, yeah. I would suggest the correspondence for your next meeting might be the best way. Yeah. Okay. Do we, need to, do we need to make a motion? Do we need a motion for that then? No, no just bring it up as correspondence for next meeting. All right, thank you. Uh, 
right now we'll, we are going to move into a closed session Don't meeting. Whoops, sorry, Councilor Ward, didn't see it. Um, for you, Mayor, one, one more thing that I just actually thought of when we were talking about, you know, some of the election border changes and, you know, we were going to have a new MP and a new MPP. And I was just wondering when that happens in April, that maybe we extend some kind of invitation to the come. two so that we could have them at the town hall for maybe a discussion with the public, um, you know, maybe who is going to be our representatives and, you know, form those connections. Because I know um, uh, David Puccini at one time used to come weekly to the office and um, maybe start up something like that. And this is a conversation, obviously, staff can bring something back. It's right. a thought that when we talked about, you know, when Deputy Mayor uh, Burt just mentioned about, um, you know, Michelle Fiore being our new representative, that we maybe reach out and be proactive on this. Right. So I agree with you. Okay. That's it. Thank you. That's it. Anybody else? Okay. We are now going to move into a closed session at 225 to review the CAO's performance management goals for 2024 and an application of the business advisory committee in accordance with section 239 slash two slash B of the municipal act 2021. Uh, Council will also discuss uh, municipal property matter in accordance with section 239 slash two slash a of the act and i have a motion please so move by deputy mayor burt second by councillor war all in favor motions carried so we're now back in the open session and the time is 324. we have no notice of motions today so we move on to the bylaws and i'll ask the clerk to read those aloud please Thank you, Mayor, and through you. That the bylaw to appoint a building inspector, property standards officer, and bylaw enforcement officer for the Township of Aspidale, Norwood, be read a first, second, and third time in number 2024 15. Councillor Walsh, Councillor War, all in favor? It's carried. And the confirming bylaw. That the bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the regular meeting of the Council of Township of Aspidale Norwood held this date, March 26, 2024, be read a first, second, and third time in number 2024 16. Uh, moved by Councillor Hodge Cree, second by Councillor Burt. All in favor? Motion carries. Council, you see the future meetings before you includes our business for today. Um, motion for adjournment, please. And the time is 326. Uh, Deputy Mayor Burt, Councillor Hodge Greaves, all in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you, everyone. A little longer meeting. <laughs>